In this eighth part of uh, our series on the making of a music video, I want to talk about drones. Now, unfortunately, in music, a drone can mean uh, the, the constant sound behind the music, as in a, a bagpiper's drone. But um, for most of us, a drone is something which flies up in the sky and does things. And in fact, it's intrusive uh, now in our modern living uh, in that uh, it's drones are used for so many things from carrying blood in forests to patients, um, looking after uh, parcels, in war time, um, bombing, and so many other applications. And one of those is the use of drones in making films. Uh, well, in music videos, I see quite a few now have used drones uh, of the flying kind. Um, and the reason for this series is because there are some effective ways of using such things, uh, and there are some ineffective ways. And I'd like to talk about that. First of all, the actual apparatus itself. We've actually got two drones. We've got, and we've chosen Spark, DJI Spark. Now, the one disadvantage they all have is that they don't, Spark don't do 4K. They do uh, HD, but that's actually not a disadvantage because the quality of their HD is very good. It's more important to use the drone um, for in a very precise way if you've got to film a, a singer. And so what might start out as a simple controlling uh, device, this is the remote controller for the Spark, uh, at, and it has a little cap which you can put on, ends up, if you want really precise control over the drone, as something looking more like this. And even that's not the end of the story. Now this thing is what we are using for controlling the drone in flight. And, and I'd like to just spend a few moments explaining it. First of all, um, there, there are the, there's the original, if you can see it, there's the original uh, controller. But because we want to have a wider screen and see more detail, we've used an adapter, this white adapter here, which enables me to put uh, a mini, uh, iPad mini 3 in the, um, in, the, in the holder. And that gives me a much bigger uh, screen. Secondly, you'll notice that the iPad is connected to the controller with this cable. And you have to pick the right cable. This will obviously use a, um, a lightning cable, but they're also, if you've got a different type of phone, you might need a series of three type three, or you might need a micro USB. But whatever it is, it's essential, I think, in my opinion, to have that cable as well as just simply a Wi-Fi connection between the two. And then finally, as if that weren't enough, these little adapters on the front, you see them, they've got a shiny mirror-like surface, convex mirror-like surface, concave, I'm sorry. Uh, and those will extend the range of the transmission from the controller quite dramatically um, and into several kilometers away. But they're very important if you want precise control. And finally, on a hot and sunny day, as we often have in Madeira, you also will need to protect the screen so you can actually see it in the sunlight. And so this uh, adapter go I've made up to go over the top and that then enables me to see the screen even on a sunny day. They're not, they're not difficult and expensive to make, but they're pretty useful when it comes to trying to see what is going on up in the sky from your screen. 
the other thing, of course, is that I've noticed that when you're flying a drone, you you very quickly lose sight of it you, because you're sometimes flying a, a long way away. Uh, and so it's important to be able to see what the drone can see so you have some idea where it is and what it's doing. Anyway, that's a few preliminary remarks. Um, as for the use of the, the drone itself, you, you, I think you, most people have been using them for what we call establishing shots. In other words, they start a long way away and come towards the performer. Um, and at the end of the uh, video, uh, the, the performance, they will be going the other way in reverse. So there's quite a, an important degree of control needed there because you've got to not only allow the drone to descend or ascend, but you've also got it to be on a trajectory towards and away from the performer. And that's why you need this precise control. Um, so to, in this uh, series, in this video, I've uh, shown some uh, of the kind of establishing shots you can use. In the first case, looking at uh, a venue from directly overhead, in this case, Quinta, Quinta Magnolia Park. Uh, that's the north side of the park. Then I've uh, taken a shot of uh, Funchal Town from the air, which could also be quite a nice establishment shot. And then uh, later on, I, uh, my videographer, Clara uh, Costa, will uh, be filming with her ordinary camera, but at the same time looking to see where the drone is. And I've been operating the drone for that uh, rehearsal. We found a place in uh, Quinta Magnolia uh, Park where it's a bit of an alcove and uh, we've been trying out to see what happens when we bring the drone quite close to the performer. But stability is very important. And drone, uh, our uh, sparks are pretty good at that. But they have a function there called tripod, which uh, doesn't let the uh, drone fly very erratically or uh, in any other but a very stable condition. And so if you use tripod, and it goes very slowly, but that's not a bad thing. If you use a tripod software part of the drone's uh, software, you can get a really stable situation. So those are the kinds of things that we've had to do to make our drone work uh, efficiently. And we're hoping that um, we can use it to some effect. And because we've got two of them, it, we're going to try and uh, film both of them at once, use both of them at once on one performance, and then edit that into various views from the sky, which you wouldn't be able to get with a normal camera or a tripod or a trolley. So we're seeing how that will go. It's very experimental. It may not work, in which case it won't go into the final version. But uh, that is our uh, take on the way drones of the flying kind are creeping into modern music videos. <laughs>